GIS are used for calculating view sheds or visibilities as we practice in this week's lab. Now, we ask you to use this tool view shed, which is found in the tools down here in the spatial analyst tools in Surface. And then there's a view shed and a view shed 2. So this view shed 2 is a newer version. We also ask you to do a visibility analysis and a line of sight. And the line of sight is available up here in the 3D analyst tools in the visibility in the line of sight. So we'll look at both of those. First, we'll look at the view shed. And again, we can find the view shed through here, this geoprocessing search wizard. And again, the view shed too. So I'll left click on that. And it's pretty simple. All you do is the input raster, the input pointer polyline. Now we have a view spot down here that we've provided, and then an output raster. And there's various parameters. The only one we have you work with is an observer offset. So a height, uh, how tall the person or observation point might be above the surface. So if I don't give an observer elevation, it grabs the elevation from the digital elevation model, and then it'll add this offset. So you might have a two meter tall person and seeing what they can view, or you could have a five meter tall platform, or you might want to see in the reverse where a tower can be seen. I might want to perhaps put a 20 meter tower here and then see what parts of the landscape can see this 20 meter tall tower. I can kind of invert that. So I'll go ahead and add a value of 20 here just for fun. And then we'll run this. Now it creates an output raster. And when the process is finished, these are all the areas that are visible from either top of a 20 meter tall tower or from which you can see a 20 meter tower if it were placed in this location. So the view automatically adds, the view should program automatically adds the output raster here. All these others, no data values out here, uh, are areas that are invisible from a location. So input a DEM and a viewpoint. And the output is a uh, raster with all the cells that are intervisible from the point at the offset that you provide. Now, I could also provide a line, and it would give me all the places in the landscape where some portion of that line was visible. A different option where I could do multiple points, and it would be any place in the landscape where I could see one of those points. So there's various options. We just introduce it to you here so that you know it exists. Another operation that we do is this line of sight. I'm going to get, go ahead and remove this um, right now so that we don't have it cluttering up our data set, is the line of sight. So again, searching for line of sight, which I showed you earlier, is in the 3D. And you notice that sometimes as you add um, search terms, your list gets longer. And again, the same thing here. We have an input surface, the driftless input line feature now, this site line feature we've provided. You could also do input features if you look at the help. This is additional features that might be blocking like buildings or, or other structures that would get in the way for the line of sight. Um, an output feature class. Now again, it's this is going to be a line that shows what's visible along the line of sight. And then um, output obstruction point. So I have this line of sight I've drawn here and you can see I'm going to change it so you can see it a little better. And so I want to see from this point at the starting to the ending, and all these lines have directionalities, what is the visibility of the surface? So here I'm on the top of a ridge. I'm looking across the valley. There's an intervening portion of a ridge, then more of a cross ridge. So what of the intervening line can I see from this observer location at the start point of the line? Now, it isn't obvious to you that this is the start point, but I know it is because I digitized from left to right. You can actually find the line directionality from the line attributes. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And you see then you get this line of sight. And every place it's red, it's invisible from the location. And every place it's green, it's visible from this location. So as makes sense. I can see the top, and there's a little something in the way. 
and I can't see over that little something till I get into the valley and there's again little obstructions along the way but I can see most of the valley here again there's a little side ridge and I don't see but I see the opposite side and then this ridge blocks I can see a bit of that ridge past it and then some of the ridge on the other side the extreme opposite side so these are two quite useful tools plus there are others in the visibility that you can experiment with and explore if you ever have to do a visibility analysis in the future.